off years ago. Figured him for dead anyway. So anyway, this lawyer fella says to me, my brother died a rich man. Oil wells and shit. Close to a million bucks. A million bucks? Yeah. Fucking incredible how lucky some assholes get. Jeez Louise, you gonna see any of that? 35,000. That's what he left me. Dollars? Yep. Holy shit, that's great. That's like one in the sweepstakes. Isn't it? Dumb shit, what do you think the government's gonna do to me? Take a big wet bite out of my ass is what? Poor Barry. Terrible fucking luck, huh? You're crying shame. <laughs> Some people really got it awful. Andy, you nuts. Keep your ass on your mop, man. Andy. Well, all right, you're gonna pay some tax, but you'll still end up. Oh, what? yeah, yeah. Maybe enough to buy a new car, and then what? I gotta pay tax on the car. Repair, maintenance. Goddamn kids pestering you to take me for a ride all the time. Yeah, at the end of the year, you figure the tax wrong, you gotta pay him out of your own pocket. I tell you, Uncle Sam puts his hand in your shirt and squeezes your tit till it's purple. He's a true the man never gets a break. That's the truth. You said, Rich, get it yourself, Joe. I keep talking. No. So, brother. Shit. Funnier sucking my dick with no teeth. What I mean is, do you think she'd go behind your back, try to hamstring you? That's it. Step aside, Mert. This fucker's having himself an accident. You don't push him off the roof. Because if you do trust her, there's no reason you can't keep that 35,000. What did you say? 35,000. 35,000. All of it. All of it. Every penny. You better start making sense. If you want to keep all that money, give it to your wife. The IRS allows a one-time only gift to your spouse for up to $60,000. Oh, shit. Tax-free? Tax-free. IRS can't touch one cent. You're that smart banker would kill his wife, aren't you? Why should I believe a smart banker like you? So I can end up in here with you? It's perfectly legal. Go ask the IRS. They'll say the same thing. Actually, I feel stupid telling you this. I'm sure you would have investigated the matter yourself. Yeah, fucking A. I don't need no smart wife killing banker to tell me where the bear's sitting the buckwheat. Of course not. But you do need someone to set up the tax free gift for you. That'll cost you. A lawyer, for example. Bunch of ball washing bastards. All right. I suppose I could set it up for you. That would save you some money. If you get the forms, I'll prepare them for you. Nearly free of charge. I'd only ask three beers apiece for each of my co workers. <laughs> co workers? Get him. That's rich, ain't it? I think a man working outdoors feels more like a man if you can have a bottle of suds. That's only my opinion. Jimmy staring at back to work. Let's go work. And that's how it came to pass that on the second to last day of the job, the convict crew that tarred the plate factory roof in the spring of '49 wound up sitting in a row at 10 o'clock in the morning, drinking icy cold Bohemia style beer courtesy of the hardest screw that ever walked a turn at Shawshank State Prison. Wake up while it's cold, ladies. The colossal prick even managed to sound magnanimous. We sat and drank with the sun on our shoulders and felt like free men. Hell, we could have been tarring the roof of one of our own houses. We were the lords of all creation. As for Andy, he spent that break hungered in the shade, a strange little smile on his face, watching us drink his beer. Hey, want a cold one, Andy? No, thanks. Gave up drinking. You could argue he'd done it to curry favor with the guards. I've got the guard. Let me use your looking glass. Thank you. Yeah, button up that collar. Suck in that gut. Tuck in them big black lips. Lighten your skin. Shrink up that nose. I don't have to listen to this. Where you going, boy? Let me buy. Let you buy? Let you buy. 
Let me tell you something, boy. You can march like the white man. You can talk like him. You can you can learn his songs. You, you can you can even wear his suits. But you ain't never gonna be nothing to him but an ugly ass chimp in a blue suit. Oh, you don't like that, do you? No. Hmm. Well, what are we gonna do about it? Want to fight me, boy? Huh? What you gonna do about it? You want to fight me, don't you? Don't you? Come <laughs> on, Nick. All right, all right. Hey, get your hands off me, Grave Dick. What? God damn it. Does the whole world got a stump in your face? Nigga, you better get your hands off me. Ain't no niggas around here, you hear me? Oh, I see. So the white man give you a couple of stripes. Next thing you know, you holler and order and everybody around like you the master himself. Yeah. Nigga, you ain't nothing but the white man's dog. Shit. What are you? So full of hate, you just want to go out and fight everybody. Because you've been whipped and chased by hounds. Well, that might not be living, but it sure as hell ain't dying. And dying is what these white boys been doing for going on three years now. Dying by the thousands. Dying for you, fool. I know, because I dug the graves. And all the time I'm digging, I'm asking myself when, when, oh Lord, is going to be our time. Well, time's coming when we're going to have to ante up. Ante up and kick in like men. Like men! You watch who you call a nigger. Then the niggas right here is you. Smart mouth, stupid ass, swamp running nigger. You ain't careful, that's all you ever going to be. You men going back to business.
We should at least include the Minister of Sport. No. I strongly advise against doing this, especially on your own. It gives the impression of autocratic leadership. You risk alienating your cabinet and your party. Your advice is duly noted. Madiba, the people want this. They hate the Springboks. They don't want to be represented by a team they cheered against all their lives. Yes, I know. But in this instance, the people are wrong. And as their elected leader, it is my job to show them that. You're risking your political capital. You're risking your future as our leader. The day I am afraid to do that is the day I am no longer fit to lead. At least risk it for something more important than drug. Tell the boys I want to go to Isis very fast. Brothers, sisters, comrades, I am here because I believe you have made a decision with insufficient information and foresight. I am aware of your earlier vote. I am aware that it was unanimous. Nonetheless, I believe we should restore the spring box. Restore their name, their emblem, and their colors immediately. Let me tell you why. On Robin Island, in Polesmoor Prison, all of my jailers were Afrikaners. For 27 years, I studied them. I learned their language, read their books, their poetry. I had to know my enemy before I could prevail against them. And we did prevail, did we not? All of us here, we prevailed. Our enemy is no longer the Africana. They are our fellow South Africans, our partners in a democracy. And they treasure Springbok rugby. If we take that away, we lose them. We prove that we are what they feared we would be. We have to be better than that. We have to surprise them with the compassion, with restraint and generosity. I know all of the things they deny us, but this is no time to celebrate petty revenge. This is the time to build our nation using every single brick available to us, even if that brick comes wrapped in green and gold. people here we are this is the day in one hour you are going to take an exam administered by the state to test your basic skills and the quality of education at Eastside High and I want to tell you what the people out there are saying about you and what they think about your chances they say you are inferior Just a bunch of niggers and spicks and poor white trash. <laughs> Education is wasted on you. 
You cannot learn. You're lost. I mean, all of you. I, I want all the white students to stand up. All my white students, stand up right now. Stand up. Come on. All my white students, stand up. Stand up. That's it. Come on. Stand up. These are my white children. And they're the same as all of you. They've got no place to go. If they had, they would have abandoned us a long time ago like everybody else did. But they couldn't. So here they are at Eastside High, just like the rest of us. You can sit down. Are you getting my point, people? Yeah. Is it beginning to sink in? Yeah. We sink, we swim, we rise, we fall, we meet our fate together. It took the help of a good, good friend to make me know and understand that. And I do understand it, and I'm grateful. I'm eternally grateful. And now I've got a message for those people out there who've abandoned you and written you off. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. You are not inferior. Your grades may be. Your school may have been. But you can turn that around and make liars out of those bastards in exactly one hour and you take that test and pass it and win. you to do when you find your minds wondering I want you to knuckle back down and concentrate concentrate remember what's at stake and show them what Eastside High is all about a spirit that will not die <laughs> <laughs>